Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And we are glad to be joining you on this Saturday morning, April 12th. It is 6 o'clock in the morning. Thanks to everyone out there for starting a little bit of your weekend with us. Yeah, I know it's a little early, but we appreciate you joining us. Uh, Sarah's off this, this weekend, so you have me and RJ mm -hmm. today, but we still have the other yes, Sarah. Yes, the other part of the dynamic duo right here. The other part of, half the, of the Sarah, Sarah Squared. <laughs> yeah, half of the Sarahs are here. Hey, by the way, uh, it is going to be a pretty... Uh, mild day. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know why my graphics say summer sat. I'm going to step away and I'm going to change this up. <laughs> We're already starting Saturday off strong, people. You can go ahead and take the storyteller. It's okay. I'll go ahead and change these graphics here. Yeah, it is going to be a nice day in Somerset today. So if you're curious about that, but let's take a look at current temperatures around the area. It is 60 degrees in San Antonio, 61 in Bolverde, 57 in Bernie and 59 in Kerrville. We do have some areas of patchy fog, especially in eastern Bear County. Take a look at JBSC Randolph visibility down to half a mile. Visibility down to six miles in New Braunfels and in Seguin. Here's a look here. We can forecast breezy today. We'll see a few gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. Those winds bringing in the humidity. It'll be noticeably humid again tomorrow, and we'll be looking at highs this weekend in the mid 80s. So a pretty nice weekend on deck, though. A couple of things that could be a bit of a nuisance. I'll tell you what to expect coming up. All right, thank you very much, Sarah. Well, two people are fighting for their lives this morning after a meetup to sell a gun ended in a shooting in Bernie. Barry County Sheriff Javier Salazar says that five people in separate vehicles met up in the 8700 block of Star Ranch to sell a gun. Then at some point, shots were fired and a chase between the two groups began. That's when a suspect in one of the vehicles pulled up to the other vehicle and allegedly shot the driver in the head and the passenger in the legs. Both were taken to the hospital. That driver is listed in critical condition and this is of course an ongoing investigation. BCSO is also asking for your help in finding 68 year old Emilio Mendoza. Mendoza was last seen on April 8th of at Christa Santa Rosa Hospital on West Over Hills. Hospital staff says Mendoza left shortly after arriving between 1 to 3 p.m. that day and has not been seen since. Police say he is diagnosed with multiple conditions that require medication. Now, if you have any information, you are asked to call BCSO at 210-335-6000. A second arrest here has been made in a botched shoe sale that ended in a deadly shooting. Check out 17-year-old Diego Salazar. He was arrested by BCSO deputies on a warrant for murder. He's believed to have been the driver for the first suspect who was arrested last Saturday. And that suspect is 18-year-old Daniel Hernandez. And we saw him, caught him earlier this week walking in front of our cameras after he was arrested. Now the sheriff's office says that Hernandez went to his friend's 18-year-old Ricky de los Santos house to buy shoes and ended up shooting him. BCSO says that De Los Santos was able to give them and done this his name as he was dying. A former cheerleading coach is going to prison for the next five years. That sentence was handed down to Bazan this week. Lex Bazan was arrested in 2021 after a security guard at Lavernia High School caught him trespassing. He report reportedly told the guard he was there visiting one of his cheerleaders that that teen told police he was there to give her the Plan B pill because Bazan was sexually assaulting her. Bazan ultimately accepted a plea deal, allowing him to plead guilty in exchange for just five years in prison. A woman facing a life sentence in the death of her four-year-old stepson. Yesterday, the trial of Miranda Caceres continued with testimony from the Bear County Medical Examiner who performed the autopsy on Benjamin Cervera. She backed up her statement that the little boy died of starvation. She said pepper seeds were the only thing in the boy's stomach. During the trial, Benjamin's brother said Caceres would force Benjamin to eat hot sauce along with hand sanitizer and toilet water. In taken in with everything else, the medical records, the autopsy findings, um, the, the lack of, of disease processes, then yes, it fits um, together that this appears to be uh, a homicide. And that right there was the Bear County Medical Examiner. If Gossetus is found guilty, she could face life in prison. Court records show that Benjamin's dad will stand trial next month. A San Antonio police detective has been suspended for 15 days after multiple incidents of unprofessional behavior at the Bear County Justice Center. That's according to city discipline records. Detective Steven Rivas was involved in the incidents. Rivas will be suspended from May 4th 
to the 18th. Well, in your morning headlines, tensions in the Middle East are high as Israel is bracing for Iran to launch a retaliatory strike in response to an Israeli airstrike on an Iranian consulate in Syria. So the U.S. is sending additional assets into the region that could assist with air defense. ABC's Derek Dennis has the latest. The U.S. is beefing up its presence in the Middle East, moving additional ships and aircraft amid heightened concern about an imminent Iranian retaliatory attack on Israel. U.S. officials say Iran has readied more than 100 cruise missiles and a sizable number of drones for a possible strike against Israel. The retaliatory attack is a response to an Israeli airstrike earlier this month on the Iranian consulate in Syria that killed top commanders. Friday afternoon, President Biden very blunt in his message to Iran after telling reporters he expects an Iranian strike sooner than later. What is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel. And Iran will not succeed. Hours later, the president addressed concerns about Americans in the region. Mr. President, are you worried Iran will kill Americans? The U.S. says it is focused on preventing a wider war in the Middle East, the president not indicating what would trigger a direct U.S. response. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. In other news this morning, Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice has turned himself into police. He is accused of being involved in a six-car chain reaction crash last month in the Dallas area and then fleeing from the scene. He posted a $40,000 bond not long after. The 23-year-old surrender comes after police in the Dallas area issued an arrest warrant for him. No one was killed in that crash, but four people were treated for their injuries. Rice faces multiple charges, including aggravated assault and collision involving injury. O.J. Simpson died Wednesday at age 76. His family announced his passing on social media. They said he lost his battle with prostate cancer, surrounded by his children and grandkids. The former NFL star and broadcaster's athletic achievements brought him fame alongside his 1995 acquittal in the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Ron Goldman. All right, mark your calendar because we have just a few days left for you to file your 2023 taxes. This year you have until Monday, April 15th to file your return. And of course, that is definitely Monday. Want to make sure you get that. If you file an extension by April 15th, you will have until October 15th then to file your taxes. You'll still be able to send your return to the IRS electronically or by mail. Speaking of filing taxes here at home, people living in San Antonio can use the volunteer, the volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program until April 15th to file their taxes for free. You can get those services at 13 locations throughout San Antonio and Fredericksburg. Some of those locations offer refund anticipation loans, and they don't charge fees or interest. For more information, go to vitussa.org. All right, what a game for our San Antonio Spurs at the Frost Bank Center. They even had Cowboys, Micah Parsons, hanging out at the Frost Bank Center to check out the silver and black, and the Spurs certainly put on a show for the Cowboys All-Pro linebacker. Devontae Graham hit a stunning game winner. Look at the celebration right here with just less than a second left in the game to lift the Spurs past the defending champion Denver Nuggets. Let's show you how this all went down against the Nuggets there as they were trying to desperately hold on to the top spot in the Western conference. Spurs trailed by as many as 23 points until the one and only you see him right there. Victor Wemanyama put on a clinic in the third quarter fueling a Spurs 8-0 run all by himself. He scored like 17 points in three minutes by himself. Wemby then hit back to back transition threes and the frost absolutely went crazy. So let's go ahead and move to this final play right here. You see Trey Jones pick up the ball. Pass it ahead to Devontae Graham. Devontae with the Euro step and boom drops it in there. Sinks the floater over Jamal Murray with 0.9 seconds seconds left. Wow. Spurs get the dub here. 120, 1 to 120. Wemby, 34 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists. Mamu, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last name, 21 <laughs> points. And Devontae Graham hits the game winner there. He finishes with 11 points. And man, the Spurs, they that's, didn't need to win this game. I mean, it was crazy. I, that's got to be a blow for Denver, though, as they're trying to hold on to that it number one seed. It absolutely change the entire shape of the Western Conference playoffs. That's why you should take every yeah. game seriously down the line. And that's why you should not mess with Wemby.
That's right. right. <laughs> it is now 6.09 and it is 61 degrees. Okay, going to college when you have kids can make things much more challenging. Still ahead, how Texas A&M San Antonio is hoping to make a generational impact for the community. Taking a live look with live cam. It is a great start to your Saturday morning. We'll have more with Sarah coming up on what that forecast is going to look like. Welcome back at 613. Happy Saturday to everyone. Nearly 100 authors will be at the San Antonio Book Festival today, including New York Times bestselling fantasy series author Kazuo Kibuishi. Yeah, he's showcasing his ninth and final book of the Amulet series. Kibuishi started drawing when he was five years old and has now been writing and illustrating for over 20 years. And the inspiration for his Amulet series comes from the reading the Japanese manga series called Nasik of the Valley of the Wind and the graphic novel Bone. He says growing up in the 90s and being inspired from movies from Steven Spielberg and George Lucas also gave him some creative direction. Amulet is a graphic novel series that follows two kids, Emily and Naveen, who have to rescue their mom after she is taken by a creature and pulled into a fantasy world called Aledia. Both Emily and Naveen not only save their mom, but others around them. While the series started in 2008, its creator hopes it can still be enjoyed by all readers. I always anticipated uh, that a new generation of readers showing up nearly every year. I'm used to it. Uh, I've seen kids just learn to read on these books, and that's that's my job. So I'm, I'm the guy at the door to the library or to the bookstore or to books in general, uh, and I'm, I'm just uh, showing people that uh, behind every book and, or uh, behind p potentially many books, uh, there, there's, there's a really great story, um, and then hopefully they can understand it and enjoy it like everyone else. Can you just now this will be his first time attending the San Antonio Book Festival. And he will be speaking around 2 p.m. today at the UTSA Southwest Campus. The family-friendly event is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And go ahead and stick around as we will be sharing more about the authors attending today's uh, book festival here in the rest of our newscast today. And we will be out there live this morning starting at 8 o'clock. I not just love wrong. when <laughs> people visit San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And the especially. weather is not too bad for it right yeah, now. Yeah, no, it, it's not. Especially like big names that visit mm -hmm. when they visit San Antonio. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, we're finally getting the recognition <laughs> we deserve. You know, yeah. Austin, heh, San Antonio. Yay. Yes. Okay, outside right now. Austin we, who? Yeah. Austin who, exactly. <laughs> we're dealing with some areas of patchy fog, RJ mm -hmm. and Erica, but generally it's, you know, going to be a pretty nice day. It's a little bit warmer than the last few mornings, but still cool. 60 degrees in San Antonio, 61 in Bulverde, 60 in Comfort, 59 in Kerrville, 59 in Las Maples, 59 in Hondo, and it's 64 in Pleasanton. As I mentioned, we do have some areas of patchy fog. Visibility is down to less than a mile out in Converse at JBSA Randolph. We're seeing visibility down to six miles in New Braunfels, down to seven miles in Castroville. So yes, you may run into some areas of patchy fog. We are, however, going to have a bit of a breezy day. Here's a look at those future wind gusts. We'll see wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour, slightly stronger up in the hill country. You know, there's lots of valleys for the wind to get into. So a little bit more breezy up into the parts of the hill country. Uh, winds will be from the south sustained at about 15 miles per hour, but a few gusts up to 25, 30 miles per hour are possible. And we'll even see windier conditions later on tonight. So those winds from the south are funneling in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. So today it'll be pretty pleasant outside. Humidity won't be that bad, especially in the afternoon. But by tomorrow, by Monday, through most of the week, you will notice the high humidity out there. So we've had a few days of pretty pleasant low humidity weather. That is going to change starting tomorrow. You'll notice the humidity will probably even have a bit of a heat index value throughout the week at times. So as you're, we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, we're going to be looking at mostly cloudy skies this morning. Partly cloudy skies later on today around 10. It's going to be 68 around noon 74 again. Notice those winds fairly breezy from the south sustained at about 15 miles per hour and in the afternoon a high temperature of 84 degrees a little on the warmer side than average or average high this time of year is 80 degrees. It's going to be near 90 though out west toward Del Rio Eagle Pass, Creasa Springs, Laredo low 80s up in the hill country higher elevations slightly cooler still warm day though. 
81 in Bernie, 81 in Bulverde, 81 in the Lotus, 83 in Canyon Lake, 84 in New Braunfels, 83 in Seguin, 84 in Floresville and Pleasanton, you'll be at 85 degrees. Let's take a look at our national weather. You can notice that it's fairly quiet across the central plains. We've got a lot of rain and snow across parts of uh, the northeast, Pennsylvania, New York, even up into New England. A few inches of rain possible in those areas, but meanwhile, high pressure system firmly in place overhead. This is what's allowing for it to be dry overhead. High means dry and it's going to be quite warmer for the central plains. Take a look at these forecast highs today. It's going to be warmer in parts of Nebraska than it will be in San Antonio today. So that is fairly uncommon for those folks up there uh, well north of us. In fact, it's going to be some 25 to 30 degrees above average today, all because of that big old high overhead. Now, eventually that high will be scooching off to the east, and as it does so, we're still going to have a fairly warm week. We'll be near 90 degrees Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, only a small chance for rain and some morning drizzle on Monday, an isolated shower on Tuesday. Fiesta starts on Thursday. What does Fiesta mean? Well, typically some wild weather over Fiesta, <laughs> and I'm seeing indications that we could have a chilly first weekend of Fiesta. I'll talk a little bit more about that coming up in the next half hour, guys. But there's that one pesky 91 degrees in there. Hey, you know what? This is that time of year, right? Yeah. The warm weather, you kind of I don't know exactly should I wear the long sleeve should I wear the short mm -hmm. sleeve be we're prepared. Here, we're yeah. here to keep you posted. Yeah, we'll absolutely. be all fresh fiesta ready. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, then, Sarah. Guys, there's a lot going on this week. We got Poteet Strawberry Festival, yes. Book Festival, Fiesta Fit Fest. A lot of things happening across the city. All right, guys, 619 right now, 61 degrees outside. After the break, how a party along the St. Mary Strip is bringing hope to business owners in the area to bring the community together and more business to their shops. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio on your Saturday. This weekend, there will be a party with a purpose along the St. Mary Strip. For years, businesses along the area have suffered, some because of COVID, others because of construction projects. And for many, it was actually a combination of both those things. And even though the closures that plague that area for years are over now, businesses there are still not booming. So Patty Santos shows us businesses in the area are hoping a party that's happening today will bring their groove back. This is a new beginning, I feel like. I feel that way too, and I hope so. A rebirth, I guess. Co-owner of the Gallery Club, Randy Simpson, is trying to make sure San Antonio's original entertainment district isn't forgotten. We wanted to let the people know the construction is over, the St. Mary Strip is alive, the party is here. The Bash is a rock the block party, Saturday from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. It's an effort by two dozen bars, shops, and restaurant owners to revive the St. Mary Strip. Can I get a pastor torta? Go where the locals go. This is the local scene. This is, we have foods of all ethnicities. We have music of every genre. Simpson says it's also a celebration for the businesses still standing. How difficult was it to imagine during COVID and during construction that this would all be done and that you would be here welcoming the crowds back to party with you guys? It's funny because the I think um, the, the construction was more painful than COVID. Amp room owner Danny Badiola says most returning customers had not heard that construction is over even though it wrapped up last September. The streets are nice, lights, and everything's ready to go. We just need to get the people back. Starting this weekend, he says, competitors will work together so everyone wins. Well, St. Mary Strip has been around since the 80s and the 90s. So hopefully we can keep it that way and give it more decades to come. Thank you everyone for supporting the St. Mary Strip. Patty Santos. So let's rock the block. KSAT 12 News. That again, that is going on later this afternoon. Yeah, busy, busy weekend. <laughs> yes, it's 625 and 61 degrees. All right, the San Antonio Food Bank is hoping to collect over a million pounds, yes, a million pounds of food this year to celebrate the 133 years of the Battle of Flowers Parade. We're going to let you know how you can help them out coming up after the break. 
Throughout the month of Fiesta, the San Antonio Food Bank hopes to collect 1.33 million pounds of food to celebrate the 133 years of the Battle of Flowers Parade. This year's theme is Viva Amor, and in honor of the Grand Marshal, President and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, Eric Cooper, the organization is collecting food for the community. The Food Bank serves 100,000 people a week and has more than 600 partner organizations and their own direct service program. I do all I can to set the table for 105,000 people each week and we couldn't do that without the generosity of many and making this year's Battle of Flowers Parade a tradition of giving and service, um, an opportunity to help support the food bank in setting the table for our community, um, it just doesn't get any better than that. It's been over a year of work to get ready for the Battle of Flowers Parade, Viva Amor 2024. The event attracts more than 550,000 spectators from around the nation. It's taking place on April 26. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It is 6.30 Saturday, April 13th, which actually is also National Scrabble Day, by the way. Okay, <laughs> that <this>? was random. <laughs> <laughs> Some pre-show research a little bit. I, yes. Yeah, there you go. But apparently, the founder of Scrabble was born on this day. I love Scrabble. Okay. <laughs> I Me and my husband, the only time we fight is Scrabble time. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm like, that's not a word. And then more often than not, he's he's, he's right. Because he's more of the wordsmith. And I'm more of the mathematician of our family. Well, it works then. It's the yin and the yang. Yes, yeah, it works out. <laughs> Scrabble. <laughs> One time I won, and I posted it everywhere that I won Scrabble. <laughs> Put them on blast. You got to. <laughs> hey, it's going to be pretty warm over the next few days. You know, we're going to see highs in the 80s, even in the middle of the week, a high temperature close to 90 degrees Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But then cold front arrives and this cold front has the potential to really make things chilly for the first weekend of Fiesta. So that's what we're watching the first weekend of Fiesta Friday the 19th through the 21st. There is the potential for this air to even be colder than we initially anticipate. So that cold front will arrive Thursday or Friday. It'll be much cooler. There's still some questions on how much cooler will temperatures be in the 50s. Will temperatures be in the 60s? It's possible still kind of outside of our 2020 vision from uh, more than uh, a week away from today. So we'll keep you posted, but that is what we're watching in the weather. As we take a look outside right now, beautiful sunrise there. We do have some areas where visibility is reduced, like in New Braunfels and Seguin, visibility down to about uh, four or five miles. And that's because we do have some areas of patchy fog. Otherwise, it's a mild morning. Temperatures in the upper 50s near 60 degrees. In the forecast, here's what we're going to talk about today. Nice but breezy. And tomorrow, humidity will return in a big way. You'll notice it next week. Small chances for rain. I'll give you those details coming up in a few minutes. Thank you very much, Sarah. In your morning Texas headlines, police are investigating after a student at a high school in the Dallas area was shot yesterday. Police responded to Wilmer Hutchins High School in southeast Dallas on an active shooter call. One student was shot in the leg and is expected to be OK. They took one person into custody. No other students were injured and parents were able to pick up their students after the incident. At least one person is dead and 13 others are hurt after a semi-trailer driver intentionally crashed into an DPS office right outside of Houston. It happened in the town of Brenham. According to police, 42-year-old Clinard Parker allegedly crashed into the building where his renewal for a commercial driver's license was rejected. Right now, authorities are not saying what charges Parker will face. The Texas Rangers are handling the investigation. All right, this is an interesting story here. The liver and kidney transplant programs have been deactivated at Memorial Hermann Hospital out of Houston after a surgeon there was accused of denying some of his patients liver transplants. That's according to our sister station in Houston, KPRC. A federal investigation is now underway for the allegations that Dr. Steve Bynan was secretly altering transplant databases with the intention of making some of his patients ineligible for liver transplants. Dr. Bynan has led Memorial Hermann's abdominal transplant program since 2011. 
happening this weekend. RJ's been telling us about it all week. Another round of traffic closures. TxDOT has closed parts of I-10 at Loop 1604. This will impact your commute on the northwest side of town. It's all part of the Loop 1604 North Expansion Project. The closures are set to be lifted on Monday at 5 a.m. For a full list of closures and detours, just head to KSAT.com. Yeah, a lot of folks dealing with that, including uh, Sarah had mentioned earlier, <laughs> dealing with a little bit of those delays out there. Well, you see them all over town, barricades, detours, cones, not fun to look at. With nope. so many shut down sidewalks and construction projects underway, less than a week before Fiesta, people are wondering and asking whether they'll be safe. Yeah, Avery Everett tell, takes us to South Alamo, where businesses and people alike say it's a burden to cross the street. To keep up with the dinner rush, the team at Ola turns up the heat. It can get pretty loud in here. But not every noise heard in these walls is one that's wanted. As soon as the people go out there and start hearing the hammers or the, the noises that the construction is making, uh, they, they go back. When did construction start to become a problem for your business? Uh, as soon as it began. <laughs> This project on South Alamo Street is still in progress after starting two years ago. And it's not the only one. Downtown is flooded with cones and construction sites, all ahead of Fiesta. But the city says these are all necessary. If we don't rebuild those, we are going to have come summertime, water break, sewer line may not function. Problem is, pedestrians don't know where to go. In just one hour, standing on the side of this street, we saw multiple people crossing illegally and dangerously. Right now, these sidewalks here between Cesar Chavez and South Alamo Street are blocked off to pedestrians. So if you're planning on walking through here during Fiesta, you'll have to walk nearly 400 feet down the street just to cross at this intersection. Locals and tourists alike say all this construction is causing safety concerns. It's a little been a little bit scary with all these cars honking and going like driving all over the place. All the roads are blocked off and we had to walk about half a mile uh, to cross a pedestrian walkway and uh, and get to where we wanted to go. One of the city's solutions is for people to look down so that you can look up directions on where you need to go. Along Market and Cesar Chavez, you'll see these signs pointing you where to walk. But traffic is still something to be aware of ahead of next week. Our recommendation is really take a public transportation. With a couple of days left before Fiesta, construction isn't going to wrap up. It's actually quite inconvenient. The people traveling through San Antonio say they won't let it affect their fiesta. Yep, not going to stop me from having fun. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. So nice to meet you. Well, good getting your steps in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Getting to graduation now is getting easier for some students at Texas A&M San Antonio. The campus now offers after school child care. As our Patty Santos explains, it's a boost for parents trying to build a better life. Monica Tijerina and Jasmine Martinez are both single moms attending Texas A&M San Antonio. This semester, they're getting extra help to finish their degrees. After we've been enrolled here and they accepted her, I thought, wow, I, I might do it this time. Yeah. You feel like you're going to finish your degree? Yeah. Their kids attend after school care on campus while their moms go to class, get tutoring, or study. It's honestly probably the best thing that's ever happened to me because it's been stress free. The Young Jaguars program is free of charge for students who are Pell Grant eligible or single parents, saving them time and money. I come to class three times, sometimes four times a week and I'm just able to come and drop her off without having to figure out, you know, who can take care of her within the family. Well, Catherine O'Brien is director of campus child care. She hopes this program makes generational impacts for the community. If we've got, you know, somebody who can't get child care, then they can't work. And so that makes an impact on the overall economic crisis that we're having. The idea to open the daycare started when O'Brien noticed her students were struggling. We started seeing um, students come to class and having to bring their children to class with them or bringing not being able to come to class because they didn't have child care for their child. Um, that really was kind of a red flag for us. After school, child care averages between 60 to $100 a week per child. For some, it's also not available. According to the children at risk.org, A&M San Antonio zip code of 78224 and many Southside communities are in a child care desert. Providing a space here at the university has been hugely impactful. A young Jaguar program is made possible through a federal grant. Mama, what are 
For Monica and Jasmine, their kids are their biggest motivators to attend class. She doesn't want me to miss a day. If there's a day that I don't want to come, she makes sure we come. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. All right, AM San Antonio doing good things for all of our folks out there in the south side. Time yes. now is 642, 62 degrees outside. Yeah, we've been talking about the San Antonio Book Festival all week and telling you about the authors attending. And now it's finally happening today. After the break, what you can expect at today's book festival. And we're going to take you outside live cam the city of San Antonio. Looking pretty good out there. Again, a nice, crisp 62 degrees outside. We're going to talk to Sarah here in just a bit because we got a lot of stuff coming up this weekend and the rest of the week. Six forty-five right now. Thanks for hanging out with us on this Saturday. Well, we've been talking about it for oh, yeah. weeks now. <laughs> the 12th Annual San Antonio Book Festival returns to downtown today, and all week we've been hearing from some of the authors attending the festival. Case at Twelve producer Haley Powers tells us about the authors who turned the stories from a podcast into a book. From the podcast studio to your hands. Worth repeating tells the everyday stories of San Antonians living in our city. So most of the people in the book are either from San Antonio or, or current, currently residents. So I think it's just sort of surprising the kinds of stories that people here in town have have lived through. Paul Flav founded the Worth Repeating podcast in 2015. One episode features seven storytellers in seven minutes, and there are seven episodes a year. After a few years of the show, Flav, along with colleagues Tori Pohl and Bergen Streetman, took 40 of those stories and turned them into Worth Repeating, the book. It really runs the gamut of all kinds of things that you see in San Antonio and really shows us as like an international city that it's very culturally diverse. This will be the first time Flav, Poole, and Streetman will attend the San Antonio Book Festival as authors, and they're excited to help tell the stories of our city. So I'm excited about that, just getting it in front of a new audience, talking about it, and sort of dispelling like any like nervousness that people have about live storytelling. It's going to be a great festival. I can't wait to be there. Get to be with these guys. It'll be fun. You have the opportunity to meet the Worth Repeating Author Trio Saturday, April 13 at the San Antonio Book Festival. The festival will take place at the Central Library in UTSA Southwest Campus and is free for all attendees. You can learn more about the authors attending by heading to our website, ksat.com. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. Pretty cool event going on out Over there. Over a hundred authors. That's it's yeah. such a great event. What mm -hmm. were some books that you guys loved reading when you oh. were kids? Oh, I, my favorite growing up was Amelia Bedelia. Oh, I loved Amelia Bedelia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Archie? You know what? I figured this question might come up. Uh, if you give a mouse a cookie, that was Aww. one of yeah. my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> Childhood the giving books. tree. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Typical millennial here. I read all those Harry Potters. Ah, uh, nice. I was the one yeah. that was at the Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. waiting line. <laughs> midnight, waiting yeah. to get my hands on the newest book. So, yeah, that was that was. Do you have a favorite out of the series? Mm. Mm. Now we're really making. Nah, no. I like picking really, a favorite really child. liked Prisoner of Azkaban, and mm -hmm. I really liked Goblet of Fire. Nice. Because nice. I feel like in Goblet of Fire, the world just opened up even more. Okay. Mainly because Voldemort came yeah. back to life. But okay, I was like you go. totally wow. lost me, Sarah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look outside. A beautiful sunrise. If you get a picture of the sunrise this morning, please send it in to KSAT Connect. Love to show those pictures. You can find KSAT Connect on our weather app. It's the camera icon or just Google search KSAT Connect. Love to be able to show those this morning. It is a mild morning out there, a little on the cool side, but not nearly as cool as it has been the last several days. It's 60 degrees in San Antonio, 58 in Kerrville, 61 in New Braunfels, 62 in Gonzales, 58 in Yavaldi. Del Rio, good morning. It is a 70 degrees in Yavaldi this and uh, Del Rio this morning. So a bit of a warmer start for uh, you guys out there and temperatures generally are some 10 to 15 degrees warmer than how we've started the last several mornings and that's all because we've had humidity return. Now you won't necessarily notice the humid weather today, but you will by tomorrow. As we take a look at our KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly cloudy out there right now. We do have some areas of patchy fog. Around 10, it'll be 68 and partly cloudy. Noon, 74 this afternoon. High temperature on the warmer side, 84 for the high. By the way, that's about four or five degrees warmer than the seasonable average. So a little warm day, but a fairly 
pleasant day. The only thing that may get in your way and might be a little bit annoying is, is the winds. The winds are going to be gusting up to 25 to 30 miles per hour throughout the day. So a bit of a breeze if you have yard work planned or spending any time outdoors, know that it will be just a touch breezy today. Otherwise, a great day for yard work if you can stand the breeze. As we take a look at your forecast humidity, I mentioned that dew points a little bit higher. It's noticeably muggy outside, but by tomorrow you'll definitely notice the higher humidity as we get those winds from the south really pumping in that Gulf of Mexico humidity. So as we take a look at your future cast, some morning clouds tomorrow morning. Then as we head into the afternoon, it's going to be mostly cloudy tomorrow. By Monday morning, the humidity is going to be so noticeable that we'll have areas of drizzle on Monday morning. So perhaps a bit of a damp morning commute in places not amounting to much, maybe a hundredth of an inch of rain if we're lucky. And then by Tuesday, a small opportunity for rain as a very weak front moves through. Again, you can see we're going to be on the tail end of this system. Tuesday, our rain chances really only stand at about 20%. As we take a look at your forecast, again, breezy today, noticeably humid tomorrow, morning drizzle on Monday. Then by Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it's going to be very warm even hot at times with temperatures in the low 90s. A front moves through on Friday, and that's going to give us the opportunity for a bit of a cooler weekend. Now, there's still some question as to how cool it will be, but potentially the highs could be in the 60s over the weekend mm. for the first full weekend of Fiesta, mm -hmm. which is definitely, I don't know about you, but that's sweater weather for me when temperatures <laughs> get down into the 60s, guys. So not a big chance for rain this week on the warmer side, but then by this time next weekend, we may be a bit cool. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. It is now 651 and 62 degrees. All right, coming up, we're going to tell you about some things to do around San Antonio this weekend. We'll tell you all about those events right after the break. All right, you hear the music, you know what that means. We're talking Fiesta and happening today and tomorrow, San Antonio Pets Alive is celebrating Fiesta with an adoption special fees for all dogs and pups who are adopted from the SAPA's Rescue Center on Marbach Road this weekend will be waived. Right now, there are tons of animals who are looking for love and a new home. All animals adopted from the SAPA are up to date on their vaccinations. They are spayed or neutered. They're also microchipped. This special is only for this weekend. Animal Care Service is always also hosting a Fiesta-themed pet adoption event this weekend. The ACS Paw Changa starts at 11 a.m. today. You like that one, RJ? I do. And it ends at 4 p.m. <laughs> Not only can you pick up a new furry companion, you can also enjoy a pop-up market that includes food vendors, free Fiesta medals, and family activities. For more information, just scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Right All right. The yeah, absolutely. And uh, hey, Paw Changa, we're, talking, we're partying Woo! here. Speaking of Fiesta, there's still time to get your tickets to our KSAT Insider Fiesta Parties. Scan the QR code that you see on our screen right there, and that'll get you tickets for Battle Flowers Watch Party. You can also get tickets to our Flambeau Watch Party. You can find all this information right now at KSAT.com. Cannot wait. We're I getting know, there. We're getting there. Fiesta. Countdown is on. <laughs> I'm ready for my chicken on a stick. Mm-hmm. Some cascarones, cascarones, the whole deal. Yes, yes. we got it going on here. All right, guys, uh, 6.56 right now, 62 degrees outside. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and before you go, we will be live at the San Antonio Book Festival later this morning. The event brings more than 100 authors from the Lone Star State and from around the country. It starts at 9 o'clock this morning, so in just a little bit, at the Central Library and UTSA Southwest Campus. If you like to see who all is attending, head to KSAT.com and you can see all of the author stories we've been sharing all week or stick around with us and we'll give you a live preview of the event later this morning. Beautiful sunrise out there right now. It's a little bit mild wow. though with temperatures only right near 60 degrees. So not as cool as the last few mornings. We've got some areas of patchy fog out there this morning, but the winds will pick up from the south. Uh, 15 miles per hour gusting up to 30 miles per hour today. So that's quickly going to 
clear out that fog. We'll be looking at a high temperature of 84 degrees this afternoon. Morning clouds tomorrow, a high of 85. You'll notice the humidity tomorrow in a big way. Morning drizzle on Monday, only an isolated shower on Tuesday. Warm Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday near 90. But a front arrives on Friday and that may actually set up mm -hmm. a fairly cool weekend next weekend. All right, thank you, Sarah. We'll be back here at 8 o'clock.